Hi, this is Philosophical Angle, and I am your host, Chris Angle. I am the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Nature of Aesthetics. These books are available free for viewing online at www.philosophypublishing.com. Along with me is my panelist, Rick Samuelson. Rick graduated from Yale, has an MBA from Wharton, an MA from Tufts. He's retired from the investment banking industry, and he's now a venture capitalist. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. The purpose of the philosophical angle is to examine the nature of concepts and topics being used in current media and compare its essence with the usage and circumstances in how it's being used. This week, the topic is immigration. So let's go to our charts. First, the United States government makes immigration policy. Everybody knows that, fairly clear. And from immigration policy, they have temporary immigration, permanent, and illegal. I think uh, temporary is fairly uh, well understood. When we say temporary, it's foreigners go to the consulates and embassies and get visas, whether it's for educational purposes, from tourism, for business. And within these categories, there are several types. For example, in business, you have an investor visa. And you have a, what I call a brain visa. It's for companies that require individuals who have certain knowledge. Uh, typically, they're PhDs. Uh, and their knowledge is so s specific that they have to look elsewhere outside the United States to fulfill the demand of this particular type of knowledge that they require. It's also uh, very sought after by companies because usually the quota, which is around 60,000, I believe, per year for companies to be able to import their brains, they uh, typically in the first day the applications for the entire year are fulfilled. <coughs> Permanent, well, we all know that, that uh, foreign, uh, f foreign nationals apply for, can apply for green cards on a lottery system every year, and that also has a certain amount of, a certain quota, and a certain number uh, can qualify for permanent immigration. Also, permanent immigration sometimes can be had from coming to the United States University and going through the system here. And some individuals are taken up by companies and provided th uh, permanent uh, immigration through this uh, through the this type of visa that we once that we talked about just previously. Also, permanent uh, sometimes is available through long-term investors. Presently, I believe uh, there are some uh, immigration is coming before Congress now, and uh, these are being these types of visas are being revisited along with their quotas. But the real reason for today's subject is illegal immigration, and something that we'll get along here to in uh, just a few minutes, of assimilation of the foreign nationals into the culture of the United States. But let's get back to illegal immigration. It's partially permitted. It's obvious that the US government permits and doesn't permit illegal immigration. 
If you look at the southern border to the United States, illegal immigrants coming across that border are sometimes apprehended and sent back. But the border is not well protected. And so many, immigrate, many illegals cross into the United States, obtain jobs, and stay permanently. So it's a kind of permission and not permitted. I personally believe, because of that somewhat inherent permission that is allowed by non-vigilance on the border, that if an individual comes across, gets a job, assimilates well into the United States, he should be given, he should be given amnesty and permanent status for a green card, which are not really green, in the United States. Of course, some are apprehended and deported. OK, that's the basic outline. So let's, let's get to a problem of when immigration allows individuals for permanent presence in the United States, should assimilation be part of the criteria used to evaluate whether a, an immigrant should be permitted to, uh, to permanently reside in the United States. So if we go to this chart, we can see that the United States has a, is of course, has its own culture, its own language, English obviously, and there are two types of culture. Any anthropologist will tell you that there's physical a physical culture and a behavioral culture to a society. A physical culture is that which a society produces physically, like a building, hence an architecture. We all know that New England is filled with these salt boxes, and they're particular to the United States, and it's part of a, a physical culture that has evolved in New England, and particularly to the United States. Americans have a certain behavioral aspects. Which we can, which we can see and say, oh, he's American. Most of America came from Christianity, from Europe, from the Judeo-Christian heritage. Our country has uh, evolved, but not totally, from the Far East. Uh, came Chinese and and other uh, uh, and and so religions such as Hindu and Buddhism and Zen and Shinto are represented in the United States also, and they seem to have well immigrate uh, well assimilated into the culture of the United States. Another culture that has uh, come lately are from the Far East, from Islam, uh, Muslims practicing Islam. And they have, more so in Europe, immigrants from the Middle East practicing uh, the religion of Islam. Which leads us to a, a question because in Europe there is some clashes between the culture of the Far East, or the, the, the Middle East, with the Christian Judeo culture of Europe. And in some cases, it has come here. This clash of cultures has come to the United States, and we've seen that with uh, the uh, Fort Hood. Uh, shootings 
the Maryland shootings, uh, the New York City uh, attempted bombing, all by Muslims. And there are more, of course, the 9-11 attack. We're all through legal visa immigration. So we need to ask ourselves, if a culture from another part of the world applies to, to the culture of the United States, but is inimical to the health of that culture, which that of the United States, should it be allowed? And I'm not particularly, well, I'm giving Islam as an example, but there might be others. We should uh, ask ourselves, should the assimilation be a natural process by the immigration authorities in giving out their temporary, permanent uh, visas and status? Let's get back to the Muslim. Why, uh, why is this? Why does a Muslim have uh, a particular trouble with Europe and with Western culture? They obviously want to bring Sharia law into Western culture, even here, uh, and in Canada, and in Europe. They are uh, claiming that they should be allowed to operate under a separate set of laws originating from their Islamic origins, particularly the Quran. So let's, uh, let's visit why, uh, why they have this uh, non-assimilation value. Well, in Surah 3, verse 154, 151, the Quran tells its practitioner, you must fight against them. Let me quote you. Quran, Surah 3, verse 151. Soon shall we cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers for that they joined companions with Allah, for which he had sent no authority." Well, what, what's happening here is that when, they, when the Quran mentions that, for that they joined companions with Allah, he's speaking specifically of Jesus Christ and the Christian's interpretation that Jesus had a divine aspect about him. Not only was he man, but he was divine. And this to the Quran is unacceptable. And so the Quran, which is, as the Quran says, it's an outgrowth of the book, the Old Testament, the New Testament. In fact, uh, part of the Quran indicates that Muhammad actually went to heaven one night and met some of the prophets, including Jesus. And so, this verse, soon shall we cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. So Christians and, and Jews are unbelievers according to the Quran. The next verse, Surah 2, 216, is also, in case uh, you might think you, it should be, there should be no doubt about it, We'll go to another passage in the Quran. Fighting is prescribed for you, and ye dislike it. But it is possible that ye dislike a thing which is good for you, and that ye love a thing which is bad for you. But Allah knoweth, and ye knoweth not. So fighting is prescribed for you, so you must fight against the unbeliever. You have no choice as a practitioner of Islam. Next, we go to the theological basis, 476. 
In Surah 4, verse 76, those who believe fight in the cause of Allah. It's pretty clear. And here's something very interesting. In Surah 356, once you're Muslim, you can't go back. It's against, it's against the rules. Surah 3, verse 56. As to those who reject faith, I will punish them with terrible agony in this world and in the hereafter. Nor will they have anyone to help. In other words, when you're a Muslim, you cannot become un-Muslim without being punished. So when they come, assimilation is not possible. And that's why you don't hear any protests against terror throughout the world that is originated by those practitioners of Islam. So with this question of assimilation, let's go to our, uh, our panelist and see what he might think about this criteria used to be able to determine as a, as a criteria for legal immigration. Rick, what do you think? Should assimilation be used as a criteria for immigration? Uh, of course. Uh, the, the notion that we owe the world uh, unlimited or even limited immigration is, um, is certainly nowhere in the Constitution. Uh, and as a matter of practicality, it's obvious that a certain class of people are inclined to injure your citizens. You have an absolute moral obligation to ensure that every possible step is taken to prevent that from happening. If that reduces the immigration of a particular group of people to near zero, uh, then so be it. Okay. So how would we determine assimilation? How would we determine a quota? For example, I mean, we, we went over the fact that uh, we need some brains from, uh, from, from away, and um, should we, can we just say all those that the companies need uh, be allowed to come and be granted visas? After all, there is a need for an American company if they need uh, a certain brain over here, and. Uh, should they not be allowed to go out and and uh, well, and get that brain? Between, yeah, let's distinguish between two types of work-related immigration. There are the H-1B visas, of which there are a few, that actually uh, apply to jobs that have the potential to increase productivity for the United States and promote prosperity. That's a minority of what the United States does. And in that respect, the United States is a huge outlier relative to all other major industrialized economies. They don't run their immigration policies the way we do. The vast majority of immigration, legal immigration, is familial. Okay, So it's low-skilled labor. Uh, that the illegal immigration you're referring to is often hired through the black market. So the appeal to a business uh, of hiring an illegal is that it allows them to flaunt the law. All right? So anyone who promotes illegal immigration on that basis is for flaunting the rule of law. All right? It allows them not to pay certain benefits. It allows them to, to pay below market prices. It allows them to flaunt the law in a variety of ways. And that's why it's immoral. OK, well, that's an interesting statement right there at the end when you said that's immoral. In other words, morality 
mirror a mirror image is the law is the law a basis for morality or or does mor or is it the other way around kind of an interesting well, question the law is applied morality and if we're going to live in a country ruled by law under the constitution then i'm afraid everyone's got to abide by the same set of laws you can't have because we feel sorry for Ill illegal immigrants and want to promote um, having more of them, you, you can't have one set of policies and laws apply to them and another set apply to other workers. Everyone's got to uh, exist and operate under the same set of laws. A pretty uh, well understood uh, principle uh, and that would be hard but not to applied in the US today. Not applied in the US today. It's true. Uh, as we uh, as we see in the southern border, uh, sometimes they're permitted and uh, the border is ignored, uh, allowing immigrants to flow almost freely uh, into the labor market. But they stay and that means that there are jobs for them. And they come because there are jobs for them. Well, uh, pragmatically yes, speaking, Pragmatically speaking, it's almost an invitation. Well, so, yes, that's because we don't force the, hire, the hiring entities to abide by laws. Okay. In other words, if you're an American citizen, all right, with a social security number, and uh, have to be subject to uh, FICA requirements and so on and so forth, you raise the cost for the hiring employer, and therefore you're at a disadvantage relative to an illegal for being hired. We currently have about 14 million unemployed in this country. Uh, we import about a million immigrants every year, irrespective of the unemployment rate. And instead, we pay Americans, Native Americans, not to work. That has been the solution that is currently on offer in the current administration. We pay a lot of people uh, not to work and with other types of benefits also, I believe. But how do we fix this problem? How do we fix well, the, Go ahead. Co companies that hire uh, illegally and on a cash basis should be severely punished, so severely punished that it puts them out of business. Because if one company plays by the rules, let's say, let's say it's a company that uh, offers a, a, a mowing service, all right, cuts grass, okay? Go to any of these mowing services around the country, you'll find tons of illegals hired there, right? And they're all paid on a cash basis because typically the uh, mowing organizations themselves receive cash. They, some get checks, some, you know, if they're big enough, they might be able to... Uh, be paid in credit with credit cards, but oftentimes they're very small operations and they run on a cash basis. And by offering a below market wage illegally, they are able to hire these illegal workers. Well, what's wrong? I'd rather see them hire college kids legally over the summer, who by the way are suffering from unusually high unemployment and